Hi everybody, this is Toby Delbrook, University of Zurich, ETH Zurich, Institute of Neuroinformatics, also representing Innovation and AnyLabs. In this uh, tutorial, I'm going to show you how to do some object tracking in JIR using event filters. So I have here running the AE viewer, and I have the filter panel open, which I can get to by clicking the filters button. And in this case, I have a certain set of filters, not the ones that I want to use for tracking. So I can select filters here. One thing which I haven't shown before is that you can remove all the selected filters using this button here, and then you can add defaults for a particular chip. That will add a set of filters um, that we've decided to add as default filters for a particular uh, chip class on the right here. Um, we can right away get rid of some of those, like auto shooter, flex time player, frame extractor, and so on. Um, I want to just show you now what you can do if you go on the left here and filter for track. Track, you'll see you again get a lot of filters here. Some of them uncategorized, some of them in blue as regarded as stable. Um, not all having to do with tracking, but you can see that tracking is one thing that we've done a lot with these event, filter, event cameras. Um, so that doesn't really help you. You can pick stable, and now you come out with just two uh, filters that have been labeled as stable. I'll pick these two filters, Median Tracker and Rectangular tra Cluster Tracker, to show you what these two filters can do. Now, to demonstrate how this works, I'm going to pick some data. In this case, I'll pick a Pendulum, which is swinging back and forth, uh, recorded under low light intensity. Um, I'm going to turn off the frames here using the Davis Toggle Frames command, Shift-F. And now you can see here you have a pendulum swinging around. I'm changing the contrast here to reduce it and increase it. You can see the pendulum swinging around. Uh, there's a lot of background noise. Um, the pendulum is still the dominant moving object, but there's also a shadow of this pendulum, which you can sometimes see on the wall back here. There's events that create a shadow. How can we track this moving pendulum? Well, the simplest possible thing you can do here is to use Median Tracker. Uh, medium tr median Tracker and I'll make this larger here so we can see it. Median Tracker is a simple filter um, which only sh tracks the median location of the events and then draws around this median location the number of standard deviations um, as a bounding box, the number of standard deviations around that, that location as a bounding box, and it also has a time constant um, which can be used to set the, the update, sort of the, how, how willing the filter is to change the location of the tracking. So in this case, you can see that it kind of tracks the pendulum, but because of the high noise level, it doesn't really stick to it very well. Um, I can make this uh, time constant, uh, the standard deviations bigger, that doesn't affect the tracking at all. But if I do increase the, decrease the time constant of the tracking, so it's a small value, um, it doesn't also help. It just makes the mo motion more jittery. The basic reason why that it's having difficulty tracking this moving pendulum is because when the pendulum gets to the end of the swing, the noise, which is the background noise in the filter, perturbs the tracking. How can I fix this? Very easily. I'll simply filter out this uncorrelated background activity using background filter, and now you can see that the filter tracks the moving object very well, even when it's moving slowly. In this case, I'm going to set the correlation time for the uh, background filter to 10 milliseconds. And so that's a simple way to track the median location. Now if I go into this median tracker here and mess around with the time constant, tau microseconds, of the median location low-pass filter and decrease it to a very small value, you can see that the filter quickly jumps away, even at the end of the swings. Um, but if I increase it so that it's very, very long, say 100 milliseconds, now it doesn't follow it anymore. The time constant is too long to follow the motion. So basically what you're doing by changing this time constant here is changing the model, your model of how this object moves around. So this demonstrates how this simple median tracker can track a single moving object. Of course, if I've taken uh, a video like this of um, two people simultaneously showing symbols for rock, scissors, paper, this median tracker is not going to be able to track them because there's two moving objects. I'll show you now how you can track multiple moving clustered objects like these two hands here using a filter 
quite a complex filter called Rectangular Cluster Tracker. Rectangular Cluster Tracker is a filter that has multiple um, categories for its properties. One of the categories it has is the number of clusters that it's willing to tra track. Uh, in this instance, it's set to one cluster. If I turn this rectangular cluster tracker on, you see that it tracks just one hand here. The other one, in fact, is completely erased. Why is the other one erased? Um, because the uh, setting, again, for global setting over here, filter events enabled is, is turned on. If I turn that off, it now shows all events. And again, it's still only tracking one object. If I want to track more than one object, I have to increase the maximum number of clusters. Here, I can increase it to say five clusters or two. If I know I have two, exactly two moving objects at most, I can set it to two and reset the filter. And now it should track just two objects. Now again, it's, this is uh, the basic assumption in this filter is that it's tracking some rectangular object or circular object. Um, so that's why it switches between the tip of the hand, uh, the tip of the arm, and um, the forearm of this person because the forearm is textured and it's creating a lot of events. That's why it's jumping back and forth between these two points. If you really want to track each of these hands separately um, and not track these noise events, for example, in the top left of this part of the data, then you need to change some parameters. The basic parameter you can change are lifetime parameters. How long does a cluster last um, and how big is that cluster? Uh, in other words, how big is that object that you're tracking? So let's make the size of the clusters bigger. De default cluster radius, I'll increase it um, uh, to, say, 60% of the... Well, actually, let's change it. We don't want the dynamic cluster radius. We want to change the cluster size here. So let's increase that. And now it's big enough to enclose the hand and the forearm. Now, when we get to this end of this video, when there's no arms moving, or maybe at the start of the video, I can't remember where it is, um, you're going to see a situation where there's just noise. We're going to mark that, in fact. So we just now want to, to not track these objects when there's not much activity. How can we set that? We can set that by the lifetime of the cluster. Cluster mass decay time constant in microseconds. If I decrease that, it should actually make these clusters disappear. Uh, because there's not sufficient data to refresh the cluster location, especially if I make this number very, very small, it should really not show those clusters. Or I can increase the mass uh, for a visible cluster. So let's set this bigger again and set the mass, the threshold mass for a visible cluster. Mass is increased every time a cluster receives data and it's, um, it's decayed in between events. So now it's not showing any visible cluster. Now if I erase these marks uh, for in and out on the left, we should start seeing the hands moving again. In fact, let's scroll to that part of the video. And now we see that it still tracks these moving hands, uh, but it doesn't track just ba basic background noise activity. If you want to see the properties of these clusters and what controls their movement, um, you can turn on various options to display things about the clusters. So for example, you can show all clusters. That shows not only the clusters that are being tracked that are considered alive, but also background activity, which is lightly outlined as these black objects here. Um, you can also show the cluster event per second, the cluster mass. If I turn on mass and now stop the filter somewhere, you see that this cluster on the right here has a mass of 40, 454. The one on the left has about similar mass of 425 events. And this allows you to get some idea of the effective mass of the cluster in response to motion. This cluster mass then allows you to set the lifetime properties um, and the uh, threshold mass for a visible cluster. Um, another thing you can do is affect the motion of the clusters. For example, um, if you go down here to the movement category, you can set this basic property which is called the mixing factor. How much a cluster is moved towards an event as a fraction of the distance from the cluster to the event. In other words, it's how much the location of the cluster is fractionally updated. If I decrease this number, it should make the movement of the clusters much smoother. To demonstrate that, let's go back to the pendulum data and track just one object here, which is the pendulum. 
I'll make the size of this pendulum smaller so it better matches the actual pendulum. You can see all the virtual clusters which don't, haven't collected enough mass in the background here um, to generate a cluster shown, but only the one that has enough mass is colored. Um, I can uh, turn off these background clusters here, like this. Uh, I won't show all clusters, and now it just shows the one object that's moving. And now let's change the movement mixing factor uh, to make it even smaller. Re if I make it too small, it loses tracking, huh? because we're assuming the object doesn't really move much at all. If I make it really big, it starts to track the cluster, and as I make this mixing factor bigger and bigger, you're going to see that the location of this moving object gets noisier and noisier as it reacts to individual events. So again, this is kind of an, an, uh, a tracking model parameter that you need to set to match the dynamics of the scene. Another thing you can do is to use the velocity to help track the cluster. If I use the velocity and now show the paths, you can see now the history of the movement of this cluster, and when I click this Use Velocity button, it actually uses momentum of the cluster to help update it. Now, if I go to a lower mixing factor, um, you can see here that it starts to lose tracking right around uh, 500 micros for the mixing factor. If I turn off Use Velocity, it should lose it much worse because it's not predicting where the cluster is going to be based on the velocity. All right, so there are a mole of parameters here. Um, anybody that seriously wants to do tracking with this rectangular cluster tractor needs to go through them one by one to understand the effect of these different parameters. Uh, but I hope this serves as an introduction to um, slightly fancier uh, isolated object tracking in JR. using